again guys it's me um, back in the kitchen again I'm today cooking I think one of my mama's favorite recipes I always enjoyed when she made this and I will tell you this is gonna take a while to prepare it's a lot of dicing and chop it up you gotta chop up your potatoes and your well I'll show you that in a few minutes but if you, if you take the time and make this recipe I'm sure you guys will enjoy it but uh, yeah, but my mom would every time she prepared this would just be one of my one of my favorite meals that she'd prepare. But I'll show you guys how to how to make it. It's my mom's chicken pot pie. Here's all the ingredients you're gonna need. Um, I'm using about six potatoes. Uh, really, all depends on what size you want. I'm, I'm using this size dish, and I might even. Um, make a little bit more. I might even put some in an extra small dish to serve later at a later time. Uh, and what we're going to do with this crust here, I don't make my own crust, but if you want to, this is the kind of crust I use. There's two in here, and I'll show you guys in a minute what we do with the crust. I have three large cans of creamy chicken soup, two onions. We're going to slice these and put these in butter and just uh, get these real good and soft. And chop up some celery. We'll cook these carrots. I'm gonna cut these carrots in half. Make these a little bit, just a little bit smaller. Uh, I got some chicken powder, a little bit of curry powder, canned uh, sweet peas, and chicken broth. And I will put a little bit of milk in here as well. I didn't get that out yet, but uh, I'll be using that a little bit later. This makes it a little bit more creamy, a little bit of milk. Well, that's all the ingredients we'll be using today. And let's get started. First, here's just a uh, potato filler. And put your potato filler. And uh, we're gonna peel these potatoes. Yeah, that, that's the oven. I've got the oven on 425. I mean, 450. I'm going to uh, put that pie crust in the bottom of that pan in a few minutes to heat it up. I'll show you guys that in a few minutes.
Yeah, be careful when you fill these potatoes. Sometimes you can get your fingers. <laughs> I'm making a pretty large batch of this, so you can, you ain't gotta use as much food as I make. I'm just, I don't, I don't know how to cook for a small group. Everything I cook is enough for an army. So y'all can have to use as much ingredients as I'm using. The chicken I got, I didn't even talk about the chicken. The chicken I got at uh, Costco, uh, what they do there is they uh, have this rotisserie chicken that they'll uh, slice, uh, chop up, and they'll put it in these uh, these bags here. That's just a big bag of chicken from from Costco. Uh, that's just the best way to do it. And sometimes I'll I'll do my own chicken. I'll uh, get three or four chicken breasts and cook them in the oven. Put a little salt and pepper on them and uh, cook those in the oven until they're good and done. But today I was just in a hurry and I kind of wanted to do this quick for y'all. Y'all can do the chicken any way you want to do it. You can use uh, the whole chicken. Some people like to use the, the dark, dark and the white meat. I, I like both, but, but this will be just white chicken today. Uh, I kind of like the, the dark meat as well. It kind of gives a little more a little more flavor, and sometimes white meat can be a little dry. And, but the, uh, the way Costco does there, I'm sure you, got, you can get any rotisserie chicken anywhere and use it. But the way they do it, they, they already have it sliced up and chopped up for you. But you can't take it right off the bone. You want to go, go that route. Another thing about this recipe is my mom will use curry powder. And that's a little, you got to use it. I just think it gives it a little different taste. Um, I don't, don't put too much because it is very powerful. It will overpower the dish. But uh, I use just a little bit of curry powder. Everybody always when I ask when I make this, I always ask, what's that flavor in there? Because they can't make it out, but it's the curry. And the curry just gives it a little, I just love anything curry chicken. Curry just gives chicken a so much, uh, a such a good flavor. Uh, you can use curry pretty much anything. Use it in chicken salad. You can use it in any dish. Curry just gives it a little more flavor. And it's, but it, like I said, it can be overpowered. So be very careful when you use it. Uh, and some of it is even spicy. Which I think they kind of have. It's a little bit spicy, but like I said, I don't put too much in there. To, so most people don't even, don't even doesn't really say it's spicy too much because I don't use that much of it. But just be very careful if you do decide to put this in your dish. Almost done peeling these potatoes. I'm going to chop these up. And then I've got my water boiling. I've got a big pot of water boiling right with salt in it. Um, I'll just chop these. And I'm going to cook these potatoes on on high heat for about 20 minutes, 15, 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, usually about 20 minutes to be usually done at that time. You don't want mashed potatoes in your chicken pot pie. You want some firm potatoes. So don't cook these too long or you'll have, you just put some gravy on and have some mashed potatoes instead of chicken, sort of whole potatoes. You want a little, you want a little bite to it. <clears throat> I'm just gonna slot chop these potatoes up now. Size pieces. You don't want a, a lot large potatoes, just want a bite size. One could be cut a little bit smaller. Put that one too.
Please comment on any videos you'd like me to make. I, my mama had a large, she could cook just about anything. So if there's anything out there that you guys would like to me to make, I can definitely pull our cookbook out. I'm sure I can find a recipe for it. If not, I'm sure there's something equivalent to it that I could probably make for you guys. So anything out there in the world that you'd like for me to make, I can make it. I can, we can make just about anything here. I hope y'all guys tried my defilet recipe. Uh, if, if you haven't found it, it's, it's under my mom's defilet. I'd like for y'all to try that and let me know how y'all liked it because that's something that I've never had anywhere else. It's kind of like one of those one of kind recipes. I've never had it at any Mexican restaurant. I've never had it at anybody's home, restaurant, anywhere. It's just a unique flavor and it's really simple to make. You just add the uh, tomato paste along with the uh, taco seasoning and it just gives it so much a good flavor um, along with the other ingredients when you add the taco salad. Almost done chopping these up. And like I said, we're going to put this into a pot of water and let it roll for about 20 minutes. I uh, did put a little salt in there because you don't, you kind of want to have anytime you do pasta, potatoes, anything in boiling water, you want to add a little salt to give the whatever you're cooking a little flavor because there's nothing worse than tasteless potatoes or tasteless pasta. It's just good to have a little bit of salt in there. It kind of gives it a little bit, a little bit of flavor. Um, like I say, you don't want to overcook these potatoes. Now I will tell you, there's some that's going to be a little mushy. Just discard those. That's why I do cook a lot more potatoes. You probably think that's a lot of potatoes, but some will be probably won't be able to use them because unfortunately some potatoes that are going to be a little smaller than others are going to cook. I'll cook a little quicker, and they will be a little more mushy. But uh, you might have to cull some of your potatoes once this is finished. And on the carrots, you don't have to get the carrots I bought. You can get the veg oil. Uh, I think the veg oil has a lot of the ingredients that I'm using. So if you'd like to cut corners and even even more and get a bag of veg oil, you can do that as well. I'm not sure what's all in a veg oil, but I know there's carrots. I think there's peas. Uh, you might even find some potatoes like this that's already chopped up, which will make your job so much easier. Like I said, this is the most time consuming part of this dish is chopping up all these vegetables. But I'm almost finished with these potatoes. Get these boiling, then we'll cut the carrots up for those. And after the vegetables are done, it's pretty much totally home free after that. Put this into the water. Just handfuls at a time here. <clears throat> this water is not quite boiling, but it'll be boiling in a few minutes. It's been going for a little while. Sorry, I'm holding the camera. I'll tap it for about 20 minutes. And uh, we should be ready to go. Alrighty. Try 
tough to pierce, so it feels good. Let's see what I'm doing here. Here. You can get those large carrots if you have a soft to have. I just like these little baby carrots. They cook so much faster. And also, they're just easier to, to deal with. I just cut them usually just kind of in half. That's usually, I might have to go, depending on how long they are, I might have to go to the coat good in threes. Let's see, this one I might do in threes. Yeah. Everything's kind of, everything's kind of, kind of like bite size. To put take that in mind, your chicken, your potatoes, your carrots, you kind of make, make it bite sized pieces. I actually, I actually put cream of celery soup in this dish, but when I got to the store yesterday, they were completely out of cream of celery soup, so I'm just using uh, cream of chicken today, but I normally use uh, two, uh, at least two cans of cream of chicken and one can of cream of celery, but I am using celery, which I gotta, I gotta cut that up next, I almost forgot about it, I gotta cut that celery up next, so. But I'm actually, I normally put in a can of cream of celery soup, so if you can find cream of celery, uh, just disregard one of the cans of cream of chicken and use the cream of celery instead. Yeah, these uh, stores are slim picking sometimes. You go in and you try to get what you need and they don't have it. I bought my first bottle of uh, sanitizer yesterday. That's the first bottle I've seen in a store in months. It's an off brand. I'm not even sure if it's even really Germex. Uh, it didn't even have a, a name on it. It just said hand sanitizer. And it may just be 10% alcohol and 90% water. Which that would not be good. All right, I'm gonna get this carrot finished. Then we'll go to the celery. Take care of it. It's taking it longer than the potatoes, which that's pretty natural because carrots are a little bit more thick. So we'll uh, have to cook these at least probably 30 minutes, maybe maybe not as long as that, but we'll have to see how it goes. I'll I'll test them before I actually pull them out of the water. But it's usually about 30 minutes that the uh, carrots have to boil.
roll those for 30 minutes. Set up for center. I will probably do. Two stalks of celery, probably. Cut these real thin. I'll saute these uh, with my onions. Uh, what I usually do is put a little butter in a bowl and I'll throw these onions and celery together. Put some saran wrap and then just microwave them for about two, four to five minutes. It's all depends on uh, how much I'm using. Now, all these are optional. If you don't like celery, you don't have to use celery. Uh, I sometimes don't use celery. I put use cream of celery soup. I sometimes just go bypass the celery. Sometimes, you know, it sort of depends on if I want to have on stock. If I don't have any celery, sometimes I won't use it. Uh, I, it's optional. I mean, it's not something that's going to make or break the dish. But if you love celery and, and it's just something you have to have, by all means, use it. But I mean, normally just use the cream of celery soup. Just tuck right there. Put it in this bowl. There are potatoes over there boiling. <clears throat> now I'm going to uh, Slice these, slice these, put these onions up. I just have two, well, I mean, the small size of the regular day onions. We're fortunate here where I live to go to get a Vidalia. If you don't get Vidalia, you have to try to find some kind of sweet, Spanish sweets or whatever we have in your area. Uh, sweet onion is just the way to go. I, you know, I could put sweet onions on cornflakes. I just love sweet onions. This is something with my mama I use in every dish. Pretty much every dish you make, you put sweet onion in it. It's just something that just really goes well uh, with anything. <clears throat> and I'm just not going to slice. I'm going to dice this. I'm going to slice it up, and I'm going to butter. I'm put it like I said. Put this in some butter and uh, just saute it now.
see what I'm doing or not. I'm sorry. I'm just uh, slicing up this onion. Don't see that or not. But I'm just putting some onion and celery in this bowl. Sorry, I'm not, I don't have my cameraman with me today. <clears throat> I'm going to go solo. Got this crack staff crew here. I know it's, it seems like it's a lot of stuff to it. It really is worth the time and worth the effort. You'll never taste another better chicken pot pie. I tell you, it's it's just so much better to have one at home and go out to a restaurant. I've never had one at a restaurant that touches this. Uh, it's always to me. It's just it's just so much. Uh, uh, just has a better flavor when you make it homemade like this. Well, with anything, if you put the time into it, it's, that's with anything in life, you put the time in. It's always so much everything works out better. There's something just thrown together. Alrighty, let's put this some butter in. Put some butter in this bowl here. About two tablespoons of butter. in here. Throw some saran wrap on it. Stirring my potatoes. All right, let's get some saran wrap. this in the microwave and let it warm up. Probably about four or five minutes. There it goes. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do this crust. You wanna keep your crust out for about 15, 10 to 15 minutes. Now this has been refrigerated, and it's frozen. You definitely wanna let this thaw outside but you keep it in the, in the freezer. I, if I was making this today, I would put it in the refrigerator overnight. I'm um, going we'll to put one of these back in the refrigerator. We're not eating it quite yet. You don't want to get these crusts too soft because they're hard to work with. Alright, we're going to do is we'll roll this uh, crust out on this counter here. And then we'll put it in this dish here. This dish does not have to be greased or anything. All we're going to do is uh, put this crust down in there and put poke some holes in the fork. Let me get my knife.
It's like working a puzzle. You just kind of get it in your dish and kind of you want to mash it around until you fill those, all those holes in there in the bottom of your dish. minutes or so and this is on cooking the oven roughly about the same time about 10 to 12 minutes magic happens. This is the, to me the most important part of this entire dish is getting your your soups and your seasons just right. This is the most crucial part of this entire recipe is getting this right. Because if you don't have enough seasons, enough broth, enough soup, then your dish is going to be off. It's hard to mess up potatoes and carrots, but this is so important to get this right. A little milk here. This can. And I'll uh, stir it up in a few minutes. Make sure I get all the others and my potato and my onions and celery. They're ready. Should be. I'll check on those in a couple of minutes here. And what I might do is even throw this in here with this once that cools down. two small cans of uh, cream of celery but unfortunately they did not have any of the store yesterday when I went. I could have went to another store probably but I just get ready to use three cans. Of, okay potatoes are ready. I'll pour these into, a, into my strainer over here. Probably about a quarter cup of milk, give or take. 
Kind of sounds like a little bit of milk. My milk can be used, uh, whatever you have, have, or not have. You can use pet milk, is what you have. Up a little bit, and I'll add my seasonings and my broth. Okay, and just a little bit of broth in here. I'm probably using about a cup to a half cup of a. Uh, I don't measure a lot of things I have all things a lot of times and sometimes they get me in trouble. I don't think that should be enough broth for right now at least. The good thing about the broth, you can always pour the pour that over the dish later. You have to. Alrighty, add a little bit of my seasons. This is just some chicken stock, chicken uh, powder, I should say. It's powder, you can use bouillon cubes, just whatever you have. Just gonna pour a little bit in here. I'd say about a tablespoon or so, maybe a little bit more. Pepper. And this is the secret wet recipe, the secret weapon. Just be very careful. Just put just a little bit of that in there. That's enough. Just be very careful with that stuff. And just stir this up. So, just gonna tear it apart as I go. I've never actually caught this before like this. I didn't know exactly how it came. I thought it was already cut up into small pieces, but that's fine. It is cut up, but just not into the size that I thought it would be, but that's cool. So we'll just use our hands. enough chicken here to make some chicken salad and possibly just about anything I'll make some chicken tetrazzini the chicken really does have a good flavor cost because they uh Pretty cheap, so you can get a whole rotisserie chicken there for under four dollars. Can't beat it. Well, I think I got this for I think under ten or below. I believe this is enough chicken for several, several dishes and meals. Good thing about this chicken is there's no gristles, there's no bone, there's no skin, there's nothing, there's none of that you have to worry about. So that's the good thing about this chicken here. It's already been clean. Nobody's going to worry about biting on a chicken bone. So we'll put a little more 
this to be better. I'd rather have my chicken like in bite sized pieces, but this would be more like uh, chicken and dumplings than chicken and pot pie, but that's fine. It is what it is. Let me see if I can couch up this up just a little bit. There should be plenty of chicken. Uh, let me stir this up. Oh yeah. Should be good. That's how the fire crush should look. You don't want to burn the fire crush. It's golden brown. I'm going to turn my oven down now to 350. Okay, see. I may put it on 400. Okay, I'll put the oven on 400. Onions and celery. Stir this up. We're getting there. potatoes on this over this uh, pie crust Get this pan of, can of peas open and with a can of peas you want to open it up and just drain the water off of it then I'm going to put the water from the peas inside into the uh, dish I'm just going to pour these uh, pour the water off these peas Don't do what I just did. I just touched that hot pan with no, with no uh, uh, oven mitt. <laughs> Some form of 
potatoes in here. You'll see most of them are pretty much uh, pretty pretty good. Some of them got to overcook. That's cool. For the most part, most of them got cooked really really good. So put the potatoes like so. And then once the carrots are ready, I'm gonna put the carrots over this. Just make sure potatoes are evenly distributed. And pour these English peas over this uh, and, uh, potatoes. Carrots are ready. Just gonna pour these carrots over the potatoes and the peas. I would just suggest taste, tasting those carrots where you stop cooking them because sometimes they still may be a little tough. So you definitely want to sample one, and I just did, and it was perfect. So I always check your vegetables for you just for you once you put them out of the water it's hard to get them started back again alrighty now it's time to pour our cream mixture over our vegetables so I'm just gonna pour all this over this going to uh, it'll go right into the bottom of the into the vegetables so you don't worry about stirring this up just want to pour this right over it and it will go into the into the bottom of the pan as it cooks and sets so this is about perfect on the as far as the, uh, the chicken and vegetables and everything to go over this and we'll put this in a 400 degree oven for about about 30 35 maybe 40 minutes it really depends on your oven and um, I use a convection I use a convection oven so I just my distributes pretty pretty good evenly no matter which rack I have it on or On this, this is pretty still hot when they're cooking that. If you fiddle that ground too long, alrighty. Now it's time to put my uh, crust on here.
pulled out your crust and this is the same thing we did earlier. I'm just going to cut this uh, crust, just put it over the top of the uh, pie. This is not an exact science. Guys, that's pot, my mom's pot pie. I'm gonna put this in the oven. I just gonna cook this for about 35, maybe 40. I'm gonna just keep eyeballing it, make sure that it's not overcooking. We'll see you guys when it's done. You guys, here's the finished product. It cooked approximately about, um, I'd say about 40 minutes on uh, 400. And here we go. We'll be digging in in a few minutes. Hope y'all try this recipe. Uh, toodles.